threat continues to increase from Cyclone Bipojoy as it gets closer to the coast of India and Pakistan. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 10th. Whilst Bipojoy could possibly be the most dangerous storm in the next five to seven days, there are actually three active and it's not the strongest. Guchol is in the western Pacific, Typhoon Guchol there in the Philippine Sea, category two right now, and a third system that formed rapidly over the northern part of the Bay of Bengal, expected to make landfall over Bangladesh in the next 24 hours. Day 10 of Atlantic hurricane season and things are now relatively quiet. There's a few thunderstorms blowing up across Cuba though, extending out over the Sargasso Sea. But generally, the Atlantic is uh, fairly quiet. Normal for the time of year, of course. Day 27 of the Eastern Pacific hurricane season and it is much quieter here. Uh, only a few little areas of thunderstorms in the intertropical convergence zone. Usually we expect the Pacific is well on its way by now, but it's still waiting for its first storm. Typhoon Guchol is a category 2 and is uh, near its peak intensity probably, maybe a bit more intensification before it moves northeastwards and affects the Japanese islands. Still we're looking at the Bonin Islands uh, that will be affected by the storm. Cyclone 3B which is very close to the Ganges River Delta, um, a significant tropical storm actually blowing up convection though mainly it's on the western side and of course cyclone Bipojoy which we're pointing out as the headline today because we are quite concerned about its forecast wind and rain potential. Let's check satellite imagery then this is how the tropics have looked in the last 24 hours you can see the signatures of all three cyclones there uh, especially towards the end of that loop some of those red zones showing extremely high rainfall amounts particularly from cyclone 3b in Bangladesh and here is latest uh, geocolor satellite imagery you can see those two storms there 3b on the far right hand side in the middle of course is cyclone Bipojoy which is still uh, not fully out with its eye yet and there's still been quite a few flashes of one and here it is again on this latest um, imagery here from our website the force 13 floaters now moving generally northwards and it's really blown up actually in the last few hours suggesting that it could be on a significant intensification trend uh, really high cloud tops in the last few hours Here's 3B, uh, obviously concerned about Myanmar after Cyclone Mocha a few weeks ago, uh, but it's just about cleared that area now and is moving up towards Bangladesh. Lots of cloud top co convection there, which could produce lots of rainfall over the area, but we expect landfall will be relatively quick. And here is uh, Typhoon at Guchol, which is sort of feeling a little bit left out as a matter of fact, but it looks pretty good. There it is, category two, around 105 mile per hour winds, and it could become a little bit stronger as it moves northwards and eventually turns northeastwards, although convection doesn't look like it's been holding in those latest frames. Sea surface temperatures around the world look like this. The eastern Pacific still getting in its groove and sea surface temperatures quite hot off the coast of Mexico. The Atlantic really getting in there. The Gulf of Mexico is looking good. Temperatures in the western Caribbean and across the board really are pretty warm and quite a bit above average at the moment. Uh, the Gulf Stream also shooting off there northeastwards. Warm temperatures in all of the main areas that matter there. Western Pacific has significantly recovered since the uh, last time we did our bulletin for Mawa and now that Guchol is in the area it's around 28 degrees Celsius under that storm right now although it will still deal with a little bit of upwelling as it turns north to northeast so I don't think it will take full advantage of the conditions and in the Indian Ocean extremely warm sea surface temperatures for Bipojoy for a little bit longer before it does drop off a little bit down to about 28-29 degrees Celsius. Southwest Indian Ocean is quiet now as you would expect into the off season. Still holding on to 26 degree waters for some of those areas including Mauritius and along the top end of Australia right now as well. South Pacific also fairly quiet. Fiji dealing with around 27 to 28 degrees Celsius waters. 
and the anomalies look like this, a significant cool area where Typhoon Guchol is right now and compare that with a significant warm compared to average there in the Arabian Sea where Cyclone Bipojoy is. And in the eastern Pacific above average in the formation areas that we usually see but out at sea it is quite a bit below average and look around the equator the El Nino effect certainly building. Oceanic heat content is also growing across the Atlantic and you can also see it along the uh, Gulf Stream now as well. It can make a big difference later on in the season. Eastern Pacific appears to be mellowing out after we saw a few little hotter spots than what we're currently seeing but it is linking up quite nicely. Western Pacific also really getting up there with those oceanic heat content values. Uh, lots of energy out there this season. So the GFS computer model for the next five days suggests that Typhoon Guchol will turn northeastwards fairly soon within the next 24 hours and it will probably start to weaken by that time as well so it's not got very long left to strengthen any further and then it will eventually turn northeastwards as mentioned and then pass probably north of Ogasawara now looking towards some of the other smaller islands in between Ogasawara and the mainland. Behind that potential for one or two other systems to form along that front although I don't think those ones depicted will. Indian Ocean then you can see both of those two storms Bipo Joy on the left hand side 3B on the right hand side which disappears very quickly within 24 hours or so and we are still concerned just about how uncertain this track is for Cyclone Bipo Joy right now as we look at that other cyclone make landfall so there is still a large area this storm can enter but it does appear at this point now that Omar it will probably miss but the storm getting very close to Karachi there in that five day period. And here's the seven day forecast rainfall for this cyclone. Uh, really channeling northwards there, a huge blob like a paintbrush almost there uh, with extremely high rainfall amounts all along that area, probably due to large amounts of convection um, and maybe strengthening of the storm as well. And look at it there, moving inland over the most southern part of Pakistan there with up to 26 inches of rainfall over land there depicted now. And this is why we're so concerned. Uh, 26 inches, that's uh, really a lot of rainfall. I'm trying to figure out how much that exactly is. I think it's about 600 to 700 millimeters and still quite high amounts well inland there as well. Out to sea, it's even higher, up to 38 inches depicted there near where the storm will do a little bit of a stalling motion in the next uh, 24 hours or so. Well, into the longer range, day 5 to 10, we're looking at the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific because it is throwing up, yes, that uh, storm or two that we were thinking about on the longer range earlier on, on other tropical weather bulletins. Now it's into the medium range, and there they are. Two cyclones, a hurricane in the Eastern Pacific, looking pretty decent there, probably getting the Academy 2 status. And in the Atlantic, this thing forming uh, in the Caribbean Sea there, round about, when's this going to be? Uh, late on in that period, around the 19th of June, they're forming to the south of the Cayman Islands. So, some things to think about there. Western Pacific, another system forming there around the 16th of June could affect the Philippines. Short-lived though. And then after that, I think there might be another one that develops there in the Philippine Sea as well later on. Of course, can't rule out either of those, but it is quite early to be calling for that just yet. But that's something to be mindful of as we enter the new week next week interesting to note philippines there could get one or two impacts and of course the indian ocean bip our joy here on this latest gfs run pretty much a direct hit over karachi and that's 22 million people there which could receive hurricane equivalent winds and extremely high rainfall amounts and then the storm moves inland turning eastwards as it does so over india so certainly an interesting new model run we're all talking about it affecting oman but now it looks like it's almost locked in that it's going to be India and Pakistan and this could be a big impact for that area. That's all the serious stuff done. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items including uh, full season and individual storm animations on request and still waiting for Hone. T-shirts available right now as they have been for quite some time and I think they'll turn to dust with age by the time Hone forms. 
In the Atlantic then, look at this in the long, long range. Uh, a hurricane there moving through Cuba and the Florida Keys and along the Florida East Coast and then off towards the northeast of the United States through the Gulf Stream. And that Eastern Pacific storm continuing there as well, getting a decent intensity, probably a category three there. And following this Atlantic system, there it is, a hurricane past the Outer Banks of North Carolina, past Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and up towards Nova Scotia there, where it impacts probably as an extra tropical storm with gale force winds. You can discuss all of that, as I'm sure you're eager to, on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather chat and general weather as well. And we also have general activities going on there too. Well, on this day, it was another story of activity in a much different way than today. On June 10th, 1997, we had Typhoon Nestor, one of a record amount of Category 5 storms, depends on how you analyze the season how many there were probably around 11 category 5 storms that season my goodness um i can't remember if that was worldwide or just in that basin but there's nestor one of them category 5 a small one and well out to sea we also had tropical storm blanca a weak storm in the eastern pacific and tropical storm kelly which would become a category 3 i think cyclone in the south pacific at a very odd time of year Back to this year then in the Atlantic, our next name on the list is Brett in the Eastern Pacific. We are still waiting for Adrian and in the Central Pacific, we are endlessly waiting for Hone. Nearly on to four years now since we last had a storm in that basin. Western Pacific, the next name now is Tallinn in the North Indian Ocean, it's Tej. And to be honest, we probably should have seen it out of 3B. I don't think there will be enough time for it to get designated now by the IMD, but we'll wait and see on that. In the Australian region, the next name is Jasper, Southwest Indian Ocean, Gizani, and in the South Pacific, it will be Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.